Scene script. Have you ever wondered what drives a man to become a monster? What twisted paths led to the creation of the Hammer Murderer? Picture a shadowy figure, a specter of dread haunting the community, wielding a tool of construction as an implement of death. His heinous acts struck terror into the hearts of all, leaving a trail of blood and fear in his wake. No one knew who he was or where he would strike next. Join us as we unravel the chilling tale of the Hammer Murderer. Every story has a beginning, and the Hammer Murderer's tale starts in a place you wouldn't expect. As the saying goes, monsters are not born, they're made. And our story begins in a sleepy, nondescript town, far removed from the chaos and crime of the bustling city. Here, in this tranquil setting, a young boy named Robert grew up, a boy who would later be known as the Hammer Murderer. Robert's childhood was rather ordinary, nestled in the heart of suburbia. His parents were hard-working folks, the kind who believed in the value of a good education and the virtue of a day's labor. They raised Robert and his siblings with love, discipline, and a strong moral compass. As a child, Robert was quiet, often lost in his own world. He had a fascination with puzzles, always eager to find the solution, to put the pieces together in just the right way. Some might have seen this as a sign of a keen mind, a potential prodigy in the making. But could this have been the first indication of a darker path? He wasn't particularly social, preferring the company of his thoughts over the chatter of his peers. He was an obedient son, a decent student, and a seemingly normal child. A childhood friend would later recall him as the quiet kid who kept to himself. But beneath this veneer of normalcy, was there a simmering darkness waiting to explode? As Robert grew older, his fascination with puzzles turned into an obsession with control. He loved to manipulate situations to arrange the pieces of his life just so. He was a perfectionist, a trait that would later serve him in a chilling, macabre way. Yet, there were no glaring red flags, no alarming incidents that would predict the horrors to come. Robert was just another face in the crowd, a ripple in the fabric of everyday life. Little did anyone know, these innocent beginnings would birth a creature of nightmares. Sworn to protect and serve, the Hammer Murderer was once a man of the law. Yes, you heard it right. This man, who later would terrorize communities with his heinous acts, was once a beacon of safety, a guardian of the peace. He started his career in the force as a bright-eyed rookie, full of ambition and a strong sense of justice. He was relentless in his pursuit of criminals, always going the extra mile to ensure safety for the innocent. He had a knack for investigations, often piecing together complex crime scenes with an uncanny intuition. His colleagues respected him. His superiors admired him. He was decorated with numerous awards and commendations for his exemplary service. He was the picture-perfect policeman, one that young recruits looked up to, the embodiment of what it meant to protect and serve. But there were signs, subtle hints that something was amiss. He had a temper, a rage that would simmer beneath the surface, occasionally spilling over. His obsession with justice teetered on the edge of unhealthy, often blurring the line between right and wrong. He was known to take the law into his own hands, meeting out punishments that were often disproportionate to the crimes. His personal life was no less tumultuous. He had a strained relationship with his family, burdened by the weight of his duty and the toll it took on his psyche. His marriage was rocky, his relationship with his children distant. The pressures of his job, combined with his personal struggles, created a potent cocktail of stress and resentment. The seeds of his downfall were sown in these early years. His unyielding pursuit of justice, his struggle with anger, his personal woes, they all contributed to the darkness that was slowly but surely taking root within him. But beneath the uniform, a darkness was brewing. A darkness that would soon eclipse his sense of duty, leading him down a path of unimaginable horror. The Hammer Murderer was not born. He was made, shaped by the very institution he once served with honor and distinction. Sometimes it's not a single event, but a series of unfortunate circumstances that push a man over the edge. In our exploration of the Hammer Murderer, we now turn to the tipping point, the moment when a dedicated policeman spiraled into the abyss of madness. Following a series of professional and personal blows, a sinister transformation began to take root. Imagine a man dedicated to the pursuit of justice, now grappling with disillusionment. He was beleaguered by a system he once trusted, one that seemed to turn a blind eye to the very crimes he had sworn to prevent. The weight of this reality began to gnaw at his sanity, like a relentless unseen predator. Add to this a life marked by personal loss and estrangement. Friends and family, once his pillar of support, had gradually drifted away. He was a lone island in a sea of despair, his cries for help drowned in the tumultuous waves of his own mind. 
As we delve deeper into the psyche of the Hammer murderer, we consult with leading psychologists. Dr. Jane Foster, a renowned forensic psychologist, suggests that he may have been grappling with a severe form of dissociative identity disorder. His descent into madness, she explains, can be likened to a switch being flipped in his brain. The policeman ceased to exist, and the Hammer murderer took his place. The contrast between his past life and his new horrifying identity is stark. A man who once upheld the law was now its worst offender. The Hammer, a tool associated with creation and repair, was now an instrument of destruction. Life is a labyrinth of choices, and every choice carves out a unique path, but in his case, the choices were made under the shadow of an unraveling mind. It's a chilling reminder of how thin the line is between sanity and madness, between upholding justice and becoming a perpetrator of heinous crimes. And so, the Hammer murderer was born. A hammer in hand, he left a trail of blood that would shock the nation. The Hammer murderer's crimes were a chilling display of brutality. With each vicious assault, he etched a path of fear and devastation, a blood trail that would forever stain the community's collective memory. His weapon of choice and everyday tool was transformed into a symbol of dread, a terrifying reminder of the potential for human malevolence. His first victim was found in their home, a scene of such ruthless violence that it was almost beyond comprehension. The shockwaves reverberated through that community, a shared sense of horror, disbelief, and fear. This was not an isolated incident. It was the beginning of a reign of terror. As the body count rose, so did the public's fear. The hammer murderer was indiscriminate in his violence, striking at the heart of the community. The once safe and familiar streets were now seen as potential hunting grounds for the remorseless killer. The very fabric of the community was torn apart, replaced with a pervasive sense of anxiety and dread. But it wasn't just the physical violence that left its mark. The psychological impact was profound. Sleepless nights, haunted by the specter of the hammer murderer, became the norm. Parents clung to their children a little tighter, friends looked over their shoulders a little more often, and trust in one's neighbor eroded into suspicion. The hammer murderer's actions were more than just a series of horrific crimes. They were a brutal assault on a community's sense of security and unity. His blood trail was not just a physical manifestation of his violence, but a chilling metaphor for the deep emotional scars he left in his wake. Yet, amidst the fear and horror, there was a glimmer of hope. The community rallied together, vowing to reclaim their streets and their peace of mind. They would not let the hammer murderer's reign of terror define them. His reign of terror would not go unchecked. Every reign of terror must come to an end, and the hammer murderer was no different. As the authorities pieced together the blood-soaked puzzle, the net began closing in on our unsuspecting villain. The investigation was relentless, a testament to the determination of those who serve and protect. With each passing day, the noose tightened, and the hammer murderer's days of freedom dwindled. Eventually, the day came when the predator became the prey. In a twist that sent shockwaves through the community, the hammer murderer was apprehended, and his true identity revealed. The man behind the horror was a familiar figure, a trusted guardian, a policeman. The revelation sent a shiver of disbelief through the public, a chilling reminder that sometimes the monsters we fear are closer than we think. The subsequent trial was a spectacle of justice. The courtroom echoed with testimonies of the heinous acts committed, the lives taken too soon, the trust broken. Our once protector was now a convicted predator. His reign of terror officially ended. The sentence was as heavy as the hammer he wielded, a life behind bars, a life of reflection on the atrocities committed, and so ends the bloody reign of the hammer murderer. A tale of a protector turned predator, reminding us that sometimes monsters hide in plain sight.